forgot which key it is. My big brother's done real good. Nice little business. Own your own home. Cute little wife. You know, that Nora's quite a gal. She, uh, did she ever tell you about the summer we spent in Saratoga Springs? She also told me she hates the ground you walk on. <laughs> she may now. She didn't then. You know, I'm, I'm sorry to leave. I've only been here about a month, but I kind of like the place. You'll like Chicago better here. Hundred dollars? <laughs> you forgot, Stan. Your little brother likes to travel first class. That's all you get, Jed. That's not all I'm going to take. Now you're not going to use that cannon. <sighs> Stand up. Don't be scared, kid. Three years, I told you that. Well, see you around. Yeah. Thanks again. Bear back. Do you think you're old enough? Well, I'm old enough to take care of myself in an argument. In case anybody wants to give me an argument. Bend off your course, aren't you, sailor? The nearest ocean's a thousand miles from here as the crow flies. Well, I'm not looking for an ocean. I just came from one. I thought I'd see you again, kid. I uh, didn't expect to see you again either. Let's talk. Looking 
all over for you the other night. Can you tell anybody what you saw in the stable? No, sir. You sure of that? Yes, sir. I, I didn't say anything, not to anybody. Fine, let's keep it that way. Yes, sir. Why'd you break into Cobra's stable? Just looking for a place to sleep. Broke, walking the road? I like a kid like that. It uh, sort of takes me back to my youth. Can I go now? Sure. You can go any way you want. As long as it's out of this territory. As long as you never tell anybody what you saw in that stable that night. I, I won't, Mr. Cover. How'd you find out my name? In the stable, I... I heard you say you were his brother. Were you really his brother? Whose brother? Stanley Culver, the, the man you... I guess I did hit him too hard, but there's nothing I can do about that now. Except make sure that you, uh, you don't tell anybody what you saw in that stable, Frankie. I won't. How'd, how'd you know my name? Switch knife? One you threw at the lamp? nice knife. Even has your name on it. You know, the United States Marshal's already looking for some uh, drifter who broke into Culver's stable. He thinks maybe the drifter killed Stanley Culver. So far, he, uh, he doesn't know the drifter was a kid in a sailor suit named uh, Frankie Niles. What if I told him I saw you kill Stanley Culver? <laughs> you think he'd believe I killed my own brother? Think he'd take your word for it? I didn't break into that stable, you did. I didn't skip out of town before the body was found. You did. Well, I was scared. I, I didn't want to get mixed up in any more trouble. Sure, kid. Have a nice trip, Frankie. If you do, I'll kill you. Kid coming back? I doubt it. Why? Forgot his headgear. Yeah, guess he had a lot in mind. Is he a friend of yours? No, just a kid drifting through. I gave him some road directions. find a horse hand? Will it stay half sober? Well, but it'll speak to Murchison. He might know one. Who's that third passenger? Jed Culver. Been drifting in and out of town the past three years. His brother used to run a livery stable, 80 miles east of here. We waiting for anybody else? That's all. Mail's on board. Take her out, Sim.
ocean's still a pretty long ways from here, sailor. Yeah, the Atlantic's pretty far, too. Hey, I only got a couple of dollars. Uh, how much would it cost for a ride to the next town? Now, this ride's in the house. Toss your bag up here and scramble inside. Thanks a lot. What's that man's boy? Hello, Mrs. Jessup. Mr. Jessup. Apparently, you don't know who this boy is. Otherwise, I'm sure you wouldn't allow him to ride in the same coach with a lady. What's the matter with him? I refuse to expose Mrs. Jessup to this boy's foul language. This is the devil's work with the devil's tongue. The well, outpost is too long a walk, even for the devil's work. Climb up here, sailor. Thank you, Simon. about three years ago. Timberline's glad to get rid of him. That bad? Completely bad. At 13, he stole a horse. At 14, he was arrested for breaking into the hardware store. Oh, I'm at a complete loss to describe such a boy. It's the truth, isn't it, my dear? The less said about him, the better. Do you have relatives in outpost, Mr. Culver? Just a place I've heard about, ma'am. Thought I'd look it over. Well, you'll find outpost a rather small community, Mr. Culver. It's also a growing community. For any enterprising man, it's a place of opportunity. Exactly what I'm looking for, Mr. Jessup. A place of opportunity. around the world of China. What kind of ships? Clippers. First time aboard the Witch of the Waves. She was a witch, all right. We got caught in a typhoon off the China Sea. Sounds rugged. Yep, sure was. After a life like that, why come back to Timberline? Reasons. Yeah, Teddy. Hey, none of my business? No, it's not that. I don't know myself why I came back. Home, I guess. This is the only place I ever had. I guess I just got tired of running. I can run clear around the world. After a while, he always heads for home. Yeah, that's about it. Why are you running now? Reasons. Sure. I just wonder, maybe you figured to settle down an outpost. Well, I did. But I changed my mind. It's not far enough. What changed your mind? Reasons? Yeah. Eh, maybe you change your mind again. No, not this time. Hey, you're broke. I'll post the end of the stage light. I'll get along. my guest tonight. Good supper, Zeke. Any idea where you're going after outpost? Nope. 
Well, there's nothing out west except big, wide, lonesome country. You know, if it was me and I was broke and tired of running, I'd take a crack at outpost. Have the same thing happen here, like in Timberline? What happened in Timberline? They ran me out of town. They ran you out of town? Who? Just about everybody. Even my aunt and uncle. I'd been away three years, and uh, they wouldn't even let me in the house out of the rain. Same thing had happened here in Outpost. You already heard the Jessops. To them, I'm just plain no good. To just about everybody, I'm no good. I'm about as popular as a rattlesnake in the month of August. How'd you win yourself a reputation like that, Frankie? Real easy. I was a pretty wild kid, I guess. I had nobody to blame but myself. Well, if a man wants to change his way of life, he sure can't do it by blaming himself for the past. And he can't do it by running. So what's he do? Well, he starts changing himself. Stops running away. Gets himself a job. Sure, where? Well, my boss runs the stage line. His name's Dan Murchison. He's a pretty good friend of mine. He also runs a general store and outpost. Sells just about everything from groceries to horse collars. It's quite a store. It's also the post office, the stage depot, and the town bank. You know, I bet a dollar if I spoke to Dan that he'd find you a job in the store. What's in it for you? Does there have to be something in it for me? Well, thanks just the same, but it's only two days away from Timberline, and I figured to put a lot more distance between me and this town. See, I didn't get much sleep last night. Where's my hammock? Last door at the end of the hall. Well, I think I'll go to bed myself. Good night. Good night. Mr. Kane offer you that job in Outpost. I want you to take it. Last night you said if you saw me again, you'd kill me. Never mind what I told you last night. I want you to take the job. Why? Because I'm telling you to. Place where I could stay. Uh, same place I am. Punk house at the outpost corral. Can he stay with us, Punk? He can if he likes. I'm sure young Niles doesn't want to put you people in a lot of trouble. Do you? No trouble? Oh, we even got an extra bunk. Might be a better place in the bunkhouse so you get back on your feet. Yeah, how about it, Frankie? Will you stay with us? <laughs> at least you can do is say thanks. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Mr. King. Simon. Yes, Dan. Did you get Cliff Eaton to saddle this trip? I got here, but way in Cheyenne. What a young friend of mine along. I'd like to talk to you. Frankie Niles, Dan Murchison. 
Hi, Frankie. Dan, I'd like to talk to you myself. Whenever Simon gets through. Sure, Claude, sure. I uh, bought you that bald face gilding. Saddles in the pack room. You'll need an extra horse. What for? An extra man? Somebody cut himself in? Didn't cut himself in. I took him in. Don't worry about the split. He's a young kid. What kid? You don't know him yet. He came on the stage with me. Name's Frankie Niles. Pops, is he still clear on the road? Yep. He says you see him on clipper ships all the way to China. Twice. For me, I, I never even seen the ocean. Only sailed boat Iris. I was a toy one. About so long. I used to sail it on the mill pond when I was a kid. What do you think you are now? How old are you? Old enough. I've been around. Yeah, I'll say. Did you ever think you might go back to the sea again? Yeah, I thought of it. Hello, Sam. Hello, Hello Dad. Howdy, Home sweet home. <laughs> what this place needs is a woman. You got any idea where we can find one? No, I'll give it some thought. <laughs> How about some coffee? No, thanks. I had a talk with Claude Jessup. Or rather, he talked to me. About the Niles boy. You don't have to tell me what he said. I already know. You talked to Claude then? You don't talk to a man like Claude. He talks to you. Hmm. Frank, you already told me his side of the story. And you choose to believe the boy? Why not? He didn't try to clean himself up. He didn't try to blame someone else. This is a very pretty story. What are you getting at, Dan? Claude says he's only thinking about outpost. He doesn't want to see a bad element settle here. And I don't like to see something else settle here. Intolerance, prejudice, bigotry. That boy's had a lot of trouble in his short life. If he wants to try to make up for it, he's going to need some help. Maybe I can give it to him. Maybe. But at the same time, we shouldn't let a warning go unheeded. Claude feels pretty strongly about this. He says if I employ that boy, he'll start taking his banking to Timberline and ask his friends to do the same. He carries a prejudice pretty far, doesn't he? Even further than that. He says if you continue harboring that boy, that I'd better start looking for a new driver. What'd you say to that? I told him I'd pass on what he said. You boys talk it over. I'll wait outside. realize that this may cost me a lot of business and it could cost him his job seems to me you made that pretty plain as long as he understands he understands it but he says he's not gonna buy his own future at the expense of the kids you live here too Luke how do you feel about it I reckon I'll have to go along with sign that's just what I thought you'd say do we get fired for saying it you got fired if you hadn't it's just what Simon and I figured you'd say. <laughs> Uh, hello, Frankie. Glad to see you on the job. Good morning, gentlemen. What can I do for you? I'd like to make a deposit. It's too much to carry around. Yes, you'll just fill out that slip, please. Are you thinking of settling here in our post, uh, Mr. Culver? 
Well, I can locate the kind of grazing land I want. This is my foreman. Picked a couple of horses. Tomorrow we'll start out looking. Well, I'm sure you won't be disappointed. We have plenty of fine virgin land around here. I'll just put this in the safe and give you a receipt. That's right. Mm. 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 could remember the, that combination. <laughs> Not very good at figures, anyway. <laughs> I say something funny? Town banker, not so much at figures. Oh, yeah. At least there's one banker honest enough to admit it. Four. Eight. That's just a sign of old age. We all have to face it. Now, then, I'll give you your receipt. There you are, sir. Thanks. We'll uh, take a look around the store. Sing out if I can be of any help for you. I see you got some India blankets on the shelf over there. Oh, yeah. Yes, I, I just bought them last month. I got them from the Navajo country. They're hand-woven. They'll, they'll last a lifetime. Yeah, nice one. Hot. Can you reach it? Oh, yes. Yes, I'll get it down for you. Oh, Frankie. Yes, sir? While you're at it, be sure and dust out those postal boxes. Yes, sir. Sometimes they use grasshoppers. Did you ever try a fly? They're too hard to catch. I don't mean a barn fly. I mean the kind you buy in a store. Oh, well, that kind costs money. Mr. Murchison's got some in the store, though. Well, I'll buy you one out of my next week's pet. See, that would be keen. Here, let me show you how to cast this thing before I have to go back to work. My lunch hour's about up now. Is he all right, Frankie? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it could have been a lot worse. He didn't mean to, Hannibal. Do we need some bandages? No, no, it'll heal right up. Maybe we can't let him do too much running around today. Here, I'll carry him home. He's a real good dog, don't you think so? Yeah. I had a dog myself once, back in Timberline. Called him Cheyenne. He was uh, part shepherd and part Indian. Sure was a good dog. What happened to him? Farmer shot him. That was a long time ago, about ten years ago. Thank right, you. Bring me the coffee. Sure. Nice. 
think I'm going to go for a walk. I'll go with you. We'll take Hannibal. Well, not tonight, Ted. Sometimes a fellow wants to be alone. Then I'll walk Hannibal by myself. You feel all right tonight, Frankie? Sure, why? I just said a word all through dinner. Well, sometimes a fellow doesn't feel like talking. I'll be back in about an hour, Pop. All right, son. Come on, Hannibal. Now I got a hunch Claude Jessup's right about that boy. All those stories about clipper ships sailing to China. Frankie's never been to sea in his life. Been working on the docks in Boston for the last three years. Never been out of the harbor. How'd you find that out? Found work papers in a sea bag. Frankie Niles, roustabout, dock worker. I never thought of you as a snooper, Luke. I just got curious. You worried about your job? I'll tell Dan it's my responsibility. Come on, you know me better than that. I'm sorry, I didn't mean that the way it sounded. I'm just thinking about Davy. He's got himself a real case of hero worship. Suppose Frankie gets out of line. I'm betting he won't. Cash money? How about ten dollars? You got yourself a bet. Besides, that ten dollars will come in real handy when I'm hunting a new job. He's out walking his dog. Who's Davy? Simon Kane's kid. He's got no reason to prowl around here. Unless you gave him one. Why should I?
Niall's voice since last night. We already know that, Claude. How can you defend him now? I'm not trying to defend him. Frankie somehow found the combination to the safe. He already knew where the extra key to the front door was. Well, a lot of us had our money in that safe. We left it there in good faith. You'll get it back, Claude. Well, we're on our way, Dan. Send somebody over to Timberline to report to the marshal. Tell him we're doing all we can to find that boy. I'll send Cliff Eaton. I hope this taught you a lesson. All right, Luke, let's not stop till nightfall. Hey! hey. Alice, where we split. You're on your own, kid. What's the matter, Frankie? Cat got your tongue? The dog. You didn't have to kill him. Forget it. What's another dog? That's $500. Can't you even say thanks? There was no need to kill the dog. You keep riding east. 500 ought to be enough to take you on another trip to China. Get that, kid. That's a long ride back to Outpost. Back to Outpost? Why not? You and I left town early last night, scouting for some grazing land. Coach, Mr. Kane. You're right with the posse. You didn't happen to see that Niles boy, did you? Young sailor? No. Why? Well, I got some bad news for him, I'm afraid. Dan Murchison tells me that you had some money on deposit in the safe. What about it? I'll tell you about it on the way back. Don't worry about your money, Mr. Culver. We'll get it back. When? This time, he'll be on his way to China again. He won't even get out of the territory. It's a telegraph office in Timberline. The marshal there can get in touch with a lot of law agencies in a hurry. I'll just hope they reach Frankie Niles. They will. Night. going to be all right. Yeah, it's great. The doc was just here again to change his bandages. Good. Who's that horse belong to outside? That's Frankie's. He just got back a little while ago. He doesn't want anybody to know he's in town until he talks to you. Frankie came back? Yeah, he wants to talk to you, Pop. I didn't do this, Mr. Kane. Jed Culver did. And there wasn't any need to club the dog, either. Culver? Yeah, he clubbed him with a rifle. Why'd you come back, Frankie? To give you this from Mr. Murchison's safe. It wasn't Frankie's fault, Pop. He didn't want to help nod that safe. They made him do it. Where's the rest of the money? Oh, Jed Culver's got it, and, and that other fella. You'll never catch him now, though. They said they were lighting out for Mexico. They rode back here. Back here? Yeah, sure. They figured to let me take the blame alone. Frankie saw Jed Culver kill a man, and Jed Culver knew these. Suppose we let Frankie tell it, son. Well, that's about it. I I saw Jed Culver kill his brother one night in a stable. His own brother. You didn't tell anybody? I ran. I was scared. He said he'd kill me if I talked. And who'd believe me anyhow? You helped Jed Culver rob Murchison's safe last night? I didn't see how there was much else I could do. He meant it about killing me. But you came back this time in spite of that. Yeah, 
I, I guess I'm just tired of running. Well, a man can run, can't hide. Where are you going, Pop? I'm going to see Jed Culver. Yeah, I'll go with you. Loan me a squirrel gun, Dave. You'll both stay here. And I mean it. Going right back in that saddle, Luke. For what for? Where are we going? Just at the corral. I'll tell you on the way. Didn't think I'd seen them. One sneaked out back, and the others holed up out by the corral. Any idea who they are? No, but if they're horse thieves, I don't want to lose that brand new $50 Appaloosa. Ed Calder? Who is it? Simon Kane. I'd like you to come over to the store, Mr. Culver. You and your foreman. Mr. Murchison needs a written report on how much money was lost in his safe. Are you tell him we'll be over in the morning. We're both bedded down. Tomorrow will be too late. He wants to send a rider into Timberline tonight. I'll wait till you get dressed. There's no rider going out tonight. Kane's trying to get us both outside. It means they caught the kid already and they believed him. Hap, cover those men. What's going on here? We're getting out of here. All five of us. Those two saddle up real quick, you won't get hurt. Culver! We'll be right out, Mr. Kane! Don't shoot! He'll kill all three of us! Don't anybody shoot! That goes for the fellow hiding around back! Hold your fire, Luke! boy quit his job? No, he's going to Timberline to tell the marshal about a murder he witnessed. He wants to square things with his aunt, his uncle. He'll be coming back, Claude. He's going to be living now, post for good. It's time to go, Sam. What are you waiting for? I'm waiting for my $10. Remember? Best bet I ever lost. Ready to go, Frankie? Yeah. Bye, Pop. So long, Frankie. Yeah. Bye, bye, Davy. Hi.
see me tap. Now, let's see. There are 16 cards above your 10 and 32 below them. So? Well, that makes the odds 2 to 1 against me. I tell you what, I'll bet you even money another dollar I beat you. You got a bet. I don't believe it. <laughs> Johnny, Sarah's trying to sleep. Do you believe any man alive can be as lucky as Ben Marble? He's won eight straight draws. Who would have better reason to believe it? You lost so much to him in the last three months, he owns this bag and baggage. Only a fool would keep on playing with him. How else will I ever get even? Are you real sure you ain't cheating me, Ben? <laughs> oh, it's just a winning streak, Johnny. A winning streak? Three months long? Well, that shows it's overdue for a change. That'll run for you for three months. Well, if it don't, I'll be working for you for the rest of my natural life. Or no wages. with that horse? Fix him to lead. Come up lane. Well, how are you going to make it with five? Slow, but sure. There's nothing the matter with this horse. Well, look at him. He's standing with his weight on all four feet. Yeah, I know. He only jumps when he's pulling. Even then, not all the time. Johnny, for goodness sake, the driver knows his job. I don't think he does. I know as much about horses as the next guy, and I said there's nothing wrong with this. Well, now, look, mister, you can take my word for it. He's lame. If I take the load off of him, he'll probably get all right. In case you didn't know it, uh, good horses like this are hard to come by. I think that horse is sound. I think you've got another reason for wanting to drag along with five horses. Well, now, just what would that reason be? I don't know, but we're not going anywhere until I find out. A stage dragging along with five horses would be easy pickings for a road agent, now wouldn't it? You just hold it right there. Now, ordinarily, I'm pretty nice to my customers, but uh, you watch that mouth. It's going to get you in a lot of trouble. Trouble don't scare me. Did you? Yes, ma'am. Seemed to me I did. official about this hearing, and I never pretended there was. It's not a trial, not an inquest. There's nothing legal about it in any way. Well, if it isn't official, why bother with it? Because the time is past when we can kill a man, bury him, and forget it. Some kind of a record has got to be made of every man's death, of how and why he came to it. That's what this is. Well, a bad start, maybe, but a start. The truth written down and witnessed. But this isn't the truth. You're trying to whitewash Luke Perry. I'm not trying to whitewash anybody. But you're trying to make him out a murderer. And I'd like to know why. 
Because that's what he is. Now, Mr. Marble here wants us to believe that Luke tormented John Kelly into drawing. I just can't believe that. Luke is a responsible, peaceful man. I'm an eyewitness. Outside of this woman and child, the only eyewitness. Nobody argues that. Well, why would I call him a murderer if it wasn't true? Well, since you've asked me, I think it's because you're trying to impress the widow that you're on her side. Or you found a way to make money out of it, one or the other. That's a lie. After hearing all sides of the story, it is my opinion that Luke Perry killed John Kelly in self-defense. And that's the way the record of Outpost is going to read if anybody wants to look it up later on. You're not even trying, Hannibal. Try a little bit. You could do it. Stop blaming yourself. Man's got a right to protect his life. Of course he does. I never should have let myself be drawn into a fight like that. I'm responsible for those people, son. Up to a point. John Kelly went beyond that point. Look, you start limiting their responsibility and the whole business falls apart. You're being bullheaded. It's the only way to be about something like this. When a man buys a ticket on our stage, he's got a right to get where he's going or the driver doesn't get there. Well, I'm willing to guarantee safe passage with my life against road agents, hostile Indians, wild animals, fire or flood. But I draw the line and let the passengers shoot me for entertainment. I think Luke did the right thing. And so does everybody else except Ben Marble, maybe. Thanks, Davey. Afraid a better man, though, wouldn't have done what I did. You're not doing that right, Davey. Here, let me show you. She did it. What do you mean, for gosh sakes? Didn't you think I could? No. Well, that shows a terrible lack of confidence in your father. Luke feels real bad about it. Yeah, Luke couldn't kill any man for any reason and not feel bad. And this is worse than it should be. Hell, killing the passenger's bad enough, Davey, but... This passenger was the husband of a young woman, and now she's alone. Andy was the father of a small child, and now she's alone. Luke feels responsible. It's a heavy burden for a man to have in his conscience. pretty stiff about this, aren't you? You're darn right I am. You have no right. I have all the right I need. This isn't an incorporated town. What's here belongs to me. I can tell what's going to be built and who's going to build it. Well, you can't keep saloons out. I don't intend to try. But that's all I want to build, a saloon. I wouldn't have you or the kind of place you'd build in outpost. What's wrong with the kind of place I build? What's wrong? I'll tell you. Your places, they're all alike. St. Joe, Abilene, Timberline. You make wickedness too attractive to go too far. I'll see you run out of town before I let you build a place like that here. You can't stop me. I wouldn't count on him. He's got plenty of friends. You killed a friend of mine. You live to tell about it. It's about all the luck you can hope for. Don't try for any more. I wasn't going to hope for luck. Think you can kill me too? If I had my choice, I'd take another way. I'm not exactly overjoyed at the idea of having you shoot at me. So I guess it kind of leaves it up to you. I'm unarmed. So am I. Man doesn't need a gun. I'm a gambler. My hands are the tools of my trade. I wouldn't risk hurting them just to prove a point that can be proven more easily another way. You try any way you like. Just remember, Dan Murchison's a friend of mine. And I'll back him as long as I can draw a breath. That may not be very long. Luke, I'm sorry. What for? Well, that was my fight. There was no need for you to get into it. I think there was. He wouldn't dare do me any serious harm. That'd be murder. He'd hang for it. But you? He could stage a killing. Make it look like self-defense. A shootout. 
He'll make you draw against a faster gun even if he has to hire one. Well, my old grandfather used to have a saying, boy, don't go looking for trouble. And if trouble comes looking for you, try to be hard to find. I'd kind of like to think that Mr. Marble has heard the same saying. Who knows? Maybe he'll leave town tomorrow. No, why do you want to make an issue of it now? Well, who wants to make an issue of it? I just don't sleep so well with a fella like that marble around town, and I kind of like to sleep. <laughs> that young woman cried the whole blessed night long. She's most out of her mind. I don't know if it's grief or if she's just frightened being left alone out here. Be careful, those jars are made of glass. Yes, ma'am. I told her she could stay out here, but she said her husband owes Ben Marble a lot of money, and she's got to work it off. Do you know what that means? Oh, no, it could mean. All depends on the woman. What about her little girl? Oh, she doesn't know what to do about the little girl. I tell you, she can't think straight. She's hysterical. She doesn't want to take the child, and she can't leave her. Simon, be sure and tell Mrs. Trever that last flower was Weaverly, just full. Yes, ma'am. And you will remember the thread. Yes, ma'am. I told Luke about the girl owing Ben Marble her husband's debts, and she's agreed to work them out. He said he'll speak to her about it. She doesn't have to work for Ben Marble. Could be she'd rather. Oh, I hardly think so. Uh, Simon, will you ask about the crock again, the five-gallon one? Will you quit worrying, Ella? I've got all your errands written down. Where? Show me. Get in the depot, Ella. But, Simon, yes. I... I take it you're leaving, Mr. Marble. I am, Mr. Murchison. A pleasant journey, Mr. Marble. So there'll be no misunderstanding on leaving because Mrs. Kelly is in trouble. No other reason. Let's make no mistake about that. Mrs. Kelly... Ella tells me you think you owe Mr. Marble your husband's debts. You don't owe him anything. I owe him a great deal. He's offered to help me, and I need help. You killed my husband, remember? Miss Kelly, there are others here who will help you. Ben Marble is not the kind of man who helps a decent woman. Excuse me, Mrs. Kelly. Stand carefully, Mr. Marble. What people will help me, Mr. Mr. Perry? You, perhaps... You, the man who killed my husband? You, a murderer? Do you mean that you want to help me? There are others. There are no others for me. I'm alone now. Alone. Alone in this miserable, godforsaken country, and it's your fault. You're not alone, Mrs. Kelly. You have your child. Yes, I have a child. I have a child to take care of alone. Alone because of you, because you killed her father. The child and I have to pay for what you've done. You can go free. You don't have to pay anything. Look, Mrs. Kelly, I know what I've done. You don't know what you've done, but you can find out. Here, you take care of the fool. You killed the father. You have to pay your own There ain't much of a dog you got there. It is, too. No, the stuffing's coming out. I got a feeling you're going to be getting a better one pretty soon. Did Mrs. Murchison make me another one? No, this one's going to be store-bought. Where is it now? Looks brand new. Well, you do want another doll, don't you? I know you want another doll. You just don't want to take anything from Luke. Listen to me. I'm going to tell you something. Something that's sure and certain. Are you listening? I know how you're feeling, and I know why you feel like you do. But you're wrong. Luke's a good man. And if you give him a chance, he'd be the best friend you ever had. I'm not asking much. All I'm asking is you'll try. Let's see now. I believe the woman said her name was Buttercup. Well, she's a real good little girl. Just like you. Only, she wants to be friend. Well, you see, she's kind of lonesome. I thought maybe you and Topsy'd let her 
lay down with you tonight. She won't wiggle or kick around or nothing like that. Now, wouldn't she be all right, right here? Just for tonight? just right for her. Give her time. It's been a couple of weeks. That's not long. No. Not for me. I can wait. A month, a year. It's what I'm doing to her that bothers me. The reason she won't take to me is what I remind her of. I'm raising a boy, Luke. I know a little bit about small fry. Take my word for it. She'll forget. Everything will be all right. My strength's just about run out. I don't know what to do next. I have to get clean, don't I? I can get a horse clean in less time than this. Hurry up. I'm hurrying as fast as I can. Come on now, you've had long enough. I'm not clean yet. Well, you can't stay till the water gets cool. Now hurry up. I am hurrying. I can't get out until I'm clean. All right, two more minutes. I'm ready now. I'll try good, you hear? Don't miss anything. I thought I was a mother. Something like that? 
Clarissa, how nice to see you again. What happened to Sarah? She all dressed up for it. Do you think her mother's going to be on the stage? She woke up this morning with that idea, Paul. She dreams it, I guess. Did you dress her up? She dressed herself up. I couldn't talk her out of it. Look, I think it's time you faced up to something. Yeah, what's that? How much does Sarah mean to you? How much is it? She means more to you than anything has ever meant in your life before. Isn't that the truth? Yeah. So I think it's about time you've done something about it. You got no right to that child the way it stands. No legal right, you mean? If that had been her mother on the stage today, she could have taken Sarah clean away from you without so much as a buy your leave. I expect a mother has a first right to a child. A good mother does. But Mary Kelly is not a good mother. She wasn't a very strong woman to begin with. She's a wreck now. You sound positive. I am and have a right to be. I saw her in Timberline this last trip. Looked her up on purpose. I've been hearing stories. Yeah? She worked for Ben Marble for a while, and you know what that means. And she quit that and took the drinking. Make a sad story very short, she's just about finished. Bad as that, huh? That's right. I talked to her. She said she'd be glad to have you adopt Sarah. Legal, I mean. She wants a child to have a good home. She's willing to sign any kind of a paper. I think you should, Luke. That child's gonna need you now. You love her. She loves you. Be good for each other. It's the right thing to do. Cain tells me that you're willing for me to adopt your daughter. Is that true? Yes. Yes, it's, it's true. I'll, I'll sign a paper. Last time you spoke to me, you called me a murderer. What about that? I know better. I saw what happened. I, if you remember, I was the one who warned you. Yeah, I remember. I've asked about you. I know what kind of a man you are. I want you to have Sarah. If I adopted her, it'd mean you'd never see her again. I wouldn't expect to. drink in a week. Anything to eat either, it looks like. Oh, what does it matter? See what I mean? 
I guess you're right. I wouldn't have believed it if I hadn't seen it. Think we can get it going again? Oh, I think so. What about her hair? Yeah, I can fix it. First of all, it needs a good wash. Yeah, so does the rest of it. Mrs. Kelly, you've got to get cleaned up. A bath, your hair fix, some new clothes. Mm. Jessica will help you. You do what she says. Do you understand? Mm, I want to... No matter. Jessica will make you do it. Now, you can spare yourself by going along with her. But fight if you feel up to it. I'll be back in an hour. Better, how do you feel? I feel fine. Clothes fit? Yes. She'll have to take in the dress or put on a few pounds. Yeah, put on a few pounds would be the best answer. Did you bring the papers for me to sign? Judge Holmes out of town. There now, don't you look nice? Why are you doing this to me? I want you to look decent when you leave town. Where am I going? What do you care? Two hours ago, you were headed down the chute, finished, trying to die. I don't care. You can send me to St. Joe if you want to. Shape your end, you'd die like a sick cat ten miles down the road. Come on. We're ready whenever you are. And bring me some coffee. I, I don't want to eat. I know you don't want to eat. But you're going to eat whether you want to or not. Now eat. Please, I, I really... Eat! Don't... You don't have to be with this guy, Mary. Thanks, you don't have to put up with him at all. I've got a place for you. Now that you're all right again, you can come back. Your clothes are there, your room is waiting. The boys have been asking for you. You'll do fine right from the start. Potatoes for you when you finish. You go ahead. I'll just be a few minutes now outside. Come on, move. Well, I don't know what you had Mary doing, but it was bound to be right. Now, let me tell you this. If I ever catch you looking in her face or talking to her again, I'll kill you. Next time, Marble, you'll know I mean it. up inside. The man around at the back. Then we'll be ready in about ten minutes. Here you go, Zeke. Mary? This is Zeke Bonner. He's the operator of this station. How do you do? Please don't show, ma'am. He was telling me about you outside. He didn't say he was so pretty. Now, Zeke, all that matters is she can cook. At least she says she can. Is that true? I can cook the ordinary things. Well, all Zeke can cook is antelope stew. Even then, it kind of tastes like gunny sack. So anything you do to better that will be an improvement and a welcome. I'm going to stay here? That's right. It'll be easy, ma'am. Me and old Tom the hostler, one stage a day. Ain't no trouble to feed a crowd like that. Yeah, after all. 
This place could, uh, you know, it could be different. Things could be cleaned up a little around here, and the food might even be fit to eat. Come on, I'll show you where you sleep. nothing. It's a clean, straight bottom. What you do with it and where you go from here is up to you. You know, there's nothing the matter with you that a lot of good hard work wouldn't cure, if you're willing to try. I, I don't know what to say. Nothing's needed. You got another chance. You can quit or go again. Take your pick. Why are you giving it to me? I got a reason. I'm not a fit person to be the mother of a child. I want you to have Sarah. You don't owe me anything for that. That's true. Then why do anything about me? Loose ends have a way of tripping a man up when he least expects it. Let's say you're a loose end. I want you put away somewhere. Loose end. Well, anybody's guess. You'd be all right. Maybe, maybe not. You better let things go as they are. Let her do anything she wants to do. Except one. No drinks. And no men, Zeke, I mean that. Don't you let a man go near, understand me? Use your shotgun if you have to. Don't you worry. She's seen the last of that. The first man touches her, loses his hand. Davy, where's that cotter pen I asked you for? I was held up by a bandit. He's right behind you. Hey, you tell your funny friend that he's got to get you cleaned up. I don't want my sweetheart growing up with a dirty face. <laughs> what, Dad, blast you? You never tasted better in your life. Probably not. Well, it wouldn't hurt you to say so. And take a look around you. She cleaned it up like this? You know doggone well. Me and Tom ain't gonna clean it. Takes a woman's know-how, a woman's hand. You're right there. That first week, I didn't know if she'd make it. And one day, she come out of that wood cave of hers, lank and gaunted like a bear in the spring. She took this place by the corners and shook it like a dog shaking a snake. You could see the dust for miles. And she ain't let up a lick since. Where is she now? Out and back, making a garden. That's where she is. We dug her up a piece of ground, and she's planting it. really didn't do. I'd been down south on a stock buying trip. I, you know, just thought I'd stop in and see how you've been getting along. Well, I'm fine. I wondered what, why you hadn't been on the stage lately. I, I, I thought a garden. Well, well, it seems funny not to have a garden. I, I guess I'm a farm girl at heart. I, I hope you don't mind. It, it's too late for peas, but pole beans and and squash and turnips and zinnias. Zinnias will grow anywhere. Yeah. Well, uh, Zeke tells me you've been kind of getting hold of things all the way around. Just been working for a change. That's all. Well, do you feel any different? If you mean about Sarah, no, I don't feel any different. I can't change what I've been. She's better off with you. I want you to have her if, if you still want her. I do. 
That's all there is to it, then. Yeah. You've been, you've been thinking about where you're going when you leave here. I don't care. Wherever you want to send me. Farther away, the better, I guess. Saint Joe. That's all right with me. When shall I be ready? I'll let you know. stage again? Yeah. Well, things have come to a head. You're going to have to do something about it. Stop putting it off any longer. What do you mean? I mean about getting the paper saying Sarah's yours. Getting her mother out of the country right away. What's the rush all of a sudden? One thing, Zeke's been holding out on you. It's a young fellow by the name of Jake Zoss been hanging around her. They're getting pretty thick. How long's that been going on? A couple of weeks. The fellow that told me about it's Ben Marble. Marble? How'd that happen? Well, I don't know how he got a hold of it, but he told me because he wants you to know he's moving in on Mary Kelly again. He wanted me to know? So as long as you were interested in Mary, he was willing to stand aside to keep the peace. Didn't want a shootout with you. I don't want one with him. But he's not going to stand aside and see some other joker take over. He figures Mary's his woman in the first place. He wants her back. And? He'll shoot it out if necessary. I was just pulling some weeds while I was waiting for you. It's hard to keep ahead of the weeds. Your garden looks better than mine. A good farmer you are. Oh, oh uh, something, something for you. Oh, you shouldn't have. Well, it's beautiful. Where in the world did you find such a thing? Oh, I don't, I don't find it. I, I make it. You say, uh, Beto, uh, I work at it at, at night, and uh, I, I think about you all the time. Just in time. I'm stealing the bite to eat. Come on, join me. What's the matter with you? Luke, for Mike's sake, what's got into you? Where's Mary, Zeke? I thought I told you to keep men away from her. And I did. The kind of men with the kind of notions you're thinking about. I kept them all away. Yeah. All but a man named Sauce. Mary ain't a dead woman, Luke. She's full of life. And I don't care what she was, she's been a good woman here. She's got a right to a man. Where are they now? What's it mean to you? Where are they, Zeke? They're out walking, Luke. 
They usually go up on the hill. I reckon you could find them there. They want to get married, Luke. He doesn't know anything about her. He doesn't know what she's been. She told him. It doesn't make any difference to Jake. He loves her. She's just hanging on to him to get away from here. Sorry, Luke. Sorry to tell you, it just ain't so. She loves him. Just turn around and go on back. I don't want any trouble with you, Terry. Not going to be any trouble if you turn around and go on back. Not without Mary. Sorry to hear you say that. I thought I told you a long time ago you seen the last of Mary. You don't want her? No difference. She's my woman. And you'll have to shoot me if you want her now. I'll do that too if I'm crowded. You're crowded. I'll kill the first man that moves. I'm at a disadvantage. Yeah. Get down off your horse and move away. one passenger. <laughs> now do I get my surprise? Now, sweetheart. This time it is your mother. Ờ, đi ăn buffet thì rẻ hơn là mình mua nha Nhiều món Có 
không nhận thật nếu như mà cắn răng đi ăn buffet thì dễ hơn thật như đã vừa tô màu xong một cái gói khoai tây chiên rất là ngon cảm ơn mọi người đã theo dõi video của mình và đừng quên ấn like subscribe kênh để ủng hộ cho mình nhé tiếp theo nghĩ xem là tôi không hình dung được bây giờ ngoại trừ bò ra cá thì bà sẽ không ăn cá ấy rồi à ăn cá chi chi ấy ờ ừ, rồi là một đúng trời mưa này thì ăn được này nghe lên khi nghèo đây là chị cho mày chọn là tại vì là mày ăn được cái món đấy thôi chứ còn chị á chỗ mèo lợn gà thì chả ăn hết cá là cũng có tha đâu mà cá nhiều xương chị mày cũng chơi hết mèo thì quá ngày xưa nhá ngày xưa lúc mà chị còn chưa nuôi mèo chẳng hạn chỗ mèo thì chị ăn hết canh sườn đấy thì chỉ nấu một ít thôi tại vì là người ta thường hay gắp ấy canh ấy thì chỉ cho nó bõm 10 20 nghìn cả sườn trong đấy thôi. Nó có cái cái đoạn sơ phụ ấy. Ừ. Thì cái đấy là nấu canh thì là ok. Đây canh sườn chua hay là sườn khoai? Cái sườn khoai cũng được. Sườn khoai cho là cho là rau đi. Cái đấy em chỉ mua 20 nghìn xương cục để về nấu canh lấy nước canh thôi Em lại thành một món rồi Khoai tây cà rốt à? Hay nấu chua đi, thì nấu chua sẽ ăn luôn Ừ, nấu chua cũng được Ăn à, mình làm thêm gì đâu Su su luôn Bà cho muốn gì mà nó, nó liên quan đến thêm một món mặn nữa đi vâng thì nhá thứ nhất là sườn sườn chua này sườn sườn chua này ừ. cá chi chi này su su luộc à ờ su su luộc có cả một món nữa đúng không ừ. thực ra là cái mè gà nó cũng xào với su su đấy. ờ nếu mà mè gà xào thì thôi không phải với su su nữa. thế nhưng mà như vậy thì mới có ba món à? cái cái canh kia thì mua ít thôi nhá. canh kia thì em chỉ mua kiểu như mọi mọi người chị thấy không ăn ấy mấy, không ăn canh mấy. Nên là chị chị thấy là canh thì chị chỉ mua khoảng 20 30 000 nấu canh thôi. Không mua đâu cả chua. Em chỉ mua 20 000 xương đấy thôi. 20 30 000 xương đấy thôi. Xong chỗ su su thì mua 10 000 cũng được. Chỗ mình luộc một một đĩa đây. Thế thôi ạ. Còn chủ yếu là cái cái 
cái cái cái mè kia xào cho mọi người ấy thôi còn canh thì chị thấy chị chị làm sao để em đủ làm một cái clip cái gì cái gì cá gì ờ ừ, thế thôi cái nhà mình có ai không ăn những cái đầu đồ đấy nhỉ? À, vừa rồi mình vừa hướng dẫn mọi người tôi xong hình uh, tranh những cái loại quả như thế dụ như trên hình nếu như cả nhà thích video của mình thì ấn like share và subscribe kênh của mình để mình ra thêm nhiều video tôi tranh hơn nữa Xin chào và hẹn gặp lại mọi người